make him there is none we try and hold it three and one but when all is said and done god is amazing amazing here are the 15 different christian authors writing prior to 325 a.d where the council of nicaea happened who specifically used the term trinity whether in greek or latin they used the word and they approved of it they affirmed the word and the word was never rejected or denied by the church. And this is prior to the Council of Nicaea, where some people erroneously believe that was the beginning of the Trinity in 325 AD, but that is false because they used the word Trinity, they affirmed it long before that even happened, and not too long after the, the passing of the apostles. Some of these 15 men would include uh, church leaders at that time, they would include apologists and theologians who uh, defended the faith against heresy, they affirmed the word, and they used it specifically. According to the extensive research done by Dr. Steve Morrison, the director of research for Christian Answers, who I believe read all the early church writings before 325 AD, 15 different early Christians mentioned specifically the word Trinity. These include Theophilus of Antioch in the mid to late second century, Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian, Hipp Hippolytus, Origen, Novation, Cyprian of Carthage, Gregory, Dionysius of Alexandria, Dionysius of Rome, Methodius, and Alexander of Alexandria. Theophilus was the bishop of Antioch, and he wrote somewhere between 168 to 181 AD. He said, In like manner, also, the three days which were before the illuminary sun, moon, and stars are types of the Trinity, Greek triad or trios, of God and his word and his wisdom. And we see from these two quotes that the first known person to use the word Trinity believed the word of God, the Son, spoke to Adam in the garden. The Son therefore pre-existed and was also begotten of the Father before creation, inseparable from him, quote, internal within his own bowels or bosom, and was the helper in the, in the things that were created by him, and by him the Father made all things. This naturally implies a co-eternal relationship and the divine person of the Logos. Tertullian was the first known person to use Trinitas in the Latin, along with connecting it to three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In this quote, he affirms only one God, describes Jesus as both man and God, Son of man and Son of God, sent by the Father into the Virgin, and the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit being one in substance, one in condition, one in power, and being but one God. Tertullian wasn't perfect, but he was a true Trinitarian. He likely believed that the sonship of Christ began at some point before at creation, but he didn't believe the deity or the divine existence of Christ began, because he, too Tertullian, was the eternal divine person of the Logos who proceeded from God, and is by whom all things were made. In one last example, still decades before Nicaea, Methodius was a Christian bishop and was martyred for his faith. He said, For the kingdom of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost is one, even as their substance is one, and their dominion one. Whence also, with one and the same adoration, we worship the one deity in three persons, subsisting without beginning, uncreate, without end, and to which there is no successor. For nothing of the Trinity will suffer diminution, not either in respect of eternity, or of communion, or of sovereignty. For not on that account is the Son of God called King, because of our sakes he was made man. It is commonly claimed from the opponents of the Trinity that the Trinity wasn't finally, fully, formally formulated, excuse the alliteration, until 381 AD or so, or later. And yet this is explicitly Trinitarian long before the different famous creeds even came along. It is true that the early church fathers didn't always use the identical language to describe the Trinity that we use today, or the very same language contained in the Athanasian Creed, etc. The specific language developed more as the heresy came and threatened the church, forcing the church to be clear and precise on what she believed in opposition to threats of, of uh, heresies against Jesus and the person of the Holy Spirit, etc. But it is very clear that the early church believed in and worshipped a tri-personal God and not a unipersonal God. They regarded God and envisioned him as tri-personal. That's what they were convicted and convinced that the scriptures really taught. If the early church wasn't Unitarian, neither should we. Now it's important to note that these 15 do not include all of the writings that we've lost that use the word Trinity. These only include the ones that have, been, that have been saved and preserved. So it doesn't include the, the, the apologists that wrote, wrote books or letters that defend the Trinity or use the word Trinity and pro, uh, approved of it. And it also doesn't include, of course, uh, how often uh, 
uh, the church in private, when they worshipped God, they, they would use the word Trinity. It doesn't include that either. So we see the term Trinity was orthodox. It was accepted by the church. No one condemned it as a word, especially. It, they, they believed and they used it as a term to represent the truth about God's existence. Is it true what they're telling me? Am I just crazy? Did you bleed on the cross for my sins to save me? But why would you die for me? My whole life I've been working for Satan while he fed lies to me. And now I'm hearing too much, trying to get a true touch of a love that can change me. I'm all screwed up, figure hell is what I deserve. But your words says we all fall short, so I guess we all.